So there's so much to explore with Face Blend. Uh, it's a pretty new feature in Onshape, and I highly recommend it. There are all sorts of situations now. This, I'm going to start with something pretty contrived, uh, pretty simple, but give you an idea of some of the things. And of course, I'm going to have to go between different examples uh, to really <clears throat> examine everything, or even half of the stuff that's in there. Anyway, I've got something that's fairly tricky here. Um, these faces are split, they're not planar, these two things are planar, we've got this lump in the middle, and I'm going to try and blend between it, and I could try and delete a few things, and um, first, although I don't really need to with a face blend, um, I'm going to put a big 30 millimeter radius circular fillet, starting on this side, and then go to this side, and you can see how it just blows over whatever's in the middle and you know maybe that's maybe we're done with it at that point but no not really um, there's a whole lot of stuff we could do uh, firstly we could change this to a width fillet and that's going to uh, you know maybe give us a, a 20 millimeters across here we we'll go back to that big one over there for the moment uh, we can make it asymmetric we could use a curvature uh, like a G2 connection um, across here. Uh, that's showing you the fillet, um, the blend. And we could even make it a chamfer, which is just a linear blend uh, across there. These could also be asymmetric. Um, maybe you need a better dimension from that. So let's make that 30, 30, and 20 on this side, or something like that. A uh, lot of controls. Um, already there. Let's put that back to 30 millimeters. Um, the next kind of set of controls are the uh, limits. So let's hide this section for a minute and put limits. Now limits are extensive, uh, let's say. The first one and probably the most obvious one for people will be a tangent hold line. Um, which allows you to select tangent, uh, to select an edge, uh, perhaps like this, and it will limit the uh, attachment of the fillet uh, according to. It's like the maximum that that the the blend will allow to be attached to this wall um, according to the uh, the value that we set. So if we reduce this value, you'll see that it allows this attachment point to be beneath the, f the edge of this hold line, whereas it's holding it on this one because otherwise the, f the, the, the blend here would have got too big. Um, so if I go back again, and you see that after 24, you know, increasing the value of this is not changing the shape because it's being held um, by that hold line. That's what hold line means. So that's, um, that's pretty cool. And you can see that it's a tangent hold line, so tangent this side, it ends up controlling what's going on on the other side as well. So that's a tangent hold line. Um, we can do a conic hold line, uh, which is similar, although it's only, uh, you know, it's not going to affect um, this side. Uh, we could put our own set of hold lines on, on this side and we'd have a, a conic shape in here. Um, there we go. And you see that it will still keep growing up the other side now uh, because the tangency uh, is no longer have to be held based on this one. Uh, this side's allowed to, to grow. Um, so there's that. Now, another um, example will be with in constraints uh, is with what we call limits. So a limit can be defined by a plane or uh, two planes or a face or an edge and you might need a help point sometimes to help it decide which of the sides uh, you're going to keep or not keep. I'm going to use a plane here there's a little little plane for us there and you'll see how it has held the, the, the blend uh, up to that point up to that plane. In fact, I can manipulate it using the manipulator uh, to choose which side. Now I can choose the one in here as well if I really wanted to. And now that is the um, uh, the result of what we've done there. And and of course, 
like any other face blend, we could keep this as a detached surface. Um, so that's just leaving this bit here. It's not trying to cap it in at all uh, or make it attached to this model. So maybe we want to do that so that we can manipulate this individually and add our own uh, spice to it uh, later on. I'll throw the ISO curves on um, for that. And that's probably uh, just, again, scratching the surface on some of these uh, these face blend things here. But if we have a look at a different example, um, a little bit more interesting, I think. Now, the um, that's not to say that edge fillets is redundant, gone away, or you know, not as good. Um, in fact, there are many situations where edge edge fillet is is what you want. Uh, maybe we would have a try here. Uh, let's put a uh, an edge fillet starting here, and maybe make it six. Yeah, six. Now. If you have a look at what's going on, um, you can kind of see that in order to get this, and if I make it a bit bigger, you'll find what happens is it starts to pull away. This is the original edge, and this is the edge that it's creating. You can see how it starts to pull away. And I don't really want that. Um, so there's a couple of things we can do. Uh, in fact, we added a whole bunch of tools for you uh, in 2022 for this. And one of them was a variable fillet. So with the vertices that are already here on the topology, I can select a couple of them and say that this one here is a zero uh, radius here. So it's going to pinch off down to nothing at this point here. And that might be kind of what we're trying to achieve. Um, I also have this option here about edge overflow. And edge overflow is, is how you know, this is this is allowing the edge to overflow um, and sort of create an extension to this face. Now, if I don't want that to happen, I can either disallow it, and you can see how it pulls it back, or I can generally allow it and then keep individual edges like this. Um, so that's done a pretty decent job there. Um, if I change the radius, you'll see that it it kind of it keeps this edge, it keeps this edge, but then this, this one has to come down smaller and smaller um, uh, just, to, just to keep this thing attached. Now, one final thing that we added to an edge fillet um, in 2022 was not just variable fillet, an overflow fillet and corners, which isn't relevant here, uh, but is the partial fillet. And a partial fillet will allow me to, at one or both ends, um, just drag in the fillet to a point, uh, some parametric position along the edge, maybe a quarter of the way along, like that. Uh, I can do it at the other end as well, uh, with the second bound. Um, so edge fillet is very, very powerful. We've enhanced that a lot. Um, but whilst doing that, we've also added in something entirely new, which is the face blend. Face blend um, starts out by asking you for a one side, and we choose the other side. And maybe we're going to have a six millimeter filler uh, blend. It's easy to call it a fillet, but it's not really a fillet, because it can be other things. <laughs> so um, you know, that's why we call it a face blend up here. Uh, we'll get to some of those other things in a minute. Okay, so the default, as we said here, um, that we saw here with the six millimeter rolling ball, circular radius, um, does a good job here. It's automatically, I've just chosen this face here as a reference, but it's automatically propagated it across. Now, um, I could change the way it decides to trim and, and how far along these it goes. Uh, I'm using the, the normal default trim type called walls, but I could change it to short. And you'll see here it, it's actually decided to stop here and here because this is where the shorter kind of side of the wall is. And it's just 
using its circular, you know, perpendicular to this rolling ball's axis uh, trajectory um, to where to cap these things off. Again, you might want to do your own treatment of how to taper this thing down, so you know, we give you this option uh, to do the trim. Otherwise, you could leave it at the default as walls. Of course, like before in other demos, I've shown how you can create a detached surface. Uh, this is an individual surface. It hasn't changed the underlying solid geometry here or surface geometry, as the case may be. But we do want to attach it in this case, and we do want to look at what's going on like we did on the other side. <clears throat> so we have a lot more options. Uh, we have tangent hold lines again. So I could use this edge as the tangent hold line. And you can see it does a really nice job <clears throat> in uh, bringing this fillet, holding this fillet here uh, to the right radius. And let's just close that off for a minute. <clears throat> it sees like it's done a really nice um, little job there. All right, so there's that one. <clears throat> but there's one other option that may have flashed up on the screen before. So let's have an examination of that. And that is a cross section. Now, how we choose the cross section to propagate or to flow along uh, between these two faces. I want to use something other than rolling ball. Now, a rolling ball is kind of as its name suggests. Uh, if you take a marble of approximately this radius and roll it between these two sets of faces, this one and this one, um, you'll get a pathway and whatever is perpendicular to that pathway along the trajectory is the uh, how the the uh, blend is being filled in now if i show you the iso curves you'll see these lines here that run uh, these run perpendicular to the rolling ball trajectory um, right. now that may be what you want but maybe you want to control that a little bit more and to control that a little bit more, we're going to use a swept profile. Now, a swept profile asks for a spine or a direction. Uh, and that direction just can be a curve or a spline or something or a line. So I'm going to use this sketch line uh, that's out in space here. I'm going to use this as my spine. Right. Now, I need to do a couple of things. Um, firstly, if I have this detached, you can see where the uh, it's just going between these two faces. I turned off propagation because I want to show you if I choose extra faces manually, it's going to show how that builds this uh, build this blend. Now I'll turn the reattach back on, and you can see how it's it's built this fillet nicely. Or even the blend, even. <laughs> I keep saying that, won't I? Now, if I flip between them, you'll see that there is a slightly different shape. See how that changes. It'd be more obvious if I turn the ISO curves back on, and you see here these kind of splay out, kind of like a radial sunburst from here. If I turn back on the swept profile, they're going to remain perpendicular. These lines here, these vertical ones, are perpendicular to the spine that we uh, that we set. Now, it doesn't have to be a straight line again, um, but it probably is nice to see it as a straight line in this example, just to see how they work. The reason you might want to do this is to control the flow of a surface from one place to another. You can see here, the flow naturally goes along here and goes straight up onto this face here. You can imagine an NC toolpath or um, that's following the flow lines here. It'll be much more efficient and probably give you a better surface finish if it just flows straight up rather than doing um, this where it has to sort of change direction once and then again twice as it keeps going further up this side. So, you know, there's many reasons why you want to use, uh, might want to use this um, swept profile versus a rolling ball, and face blend is the tool that's going to allow you to do it. Now, there's even more options in here that I haven't gotten to in this example. Uh, we'll have to wait for a different one for that. <clears throat>